A line of severe storms is coming into our area. A live look at our Max HD radar shows heavy rain and lightning. It's our top story on the night team. I'm Connie Leonard. Doug is off tonight. We are getting you right to weather first with meteorologist Colleen Peterson. And Colleen, what's the timing on these storms hitting Louisville? I think it's going to be right around midnight, the line of severe storms. And I am anticipating uh, it to continue to issue severe thunderstorm warnings as it's heads its way towards Louisville. As of now, there is no current tornado warning in place. However, there is a tornado possible in the severe thunderstorm over Jasper. We are seeing some broad rotation being picked up in that area. Other than that, it's really just straight line wind. We got reports of some damage off to the west just by straight line winds. So expect winds up to 60, maybe 70 miles per hour right along the line. So let's go ahead and get right over to that velocity. I think it's clocking in around 60 miles per hour right over Patoka Lake. And if we are going to see some broad rotation, I'm going to watch this area. If it continues to tighten, we'll definitely update you on that. So French Lake, just be on the lookout. You have some strong wind gusts heading your way, and then it's going to head over to Paoli. Next stop was Crawford County, and then Louisville. Looking at the timing, I think right around 1150 midnight, that's when the line of severe storms will head over our way. So don't be surprised if your phone goes off, if you start to get to the alerts, because it is holding its strength. A lot of lightning and a lot of heavy downpours with this system. It's mainly going to be a straight line wind event, but that can create just as much damage as a low end tornado. So we have to take these severe thunderstorm warnings pretty seriously, but over Grayson County, no warning for you. In fact, I think areas farther south of Louisville, that includes E-Town and Bardstown, you're going to miss out on the bulk of the severe storms. It is really trending farther to the north. So breaking down the severe weather that's possible tonight. In fact, it's happening right now until two o'clock. By the time we head even around 12 30, 1 o'clock, the line will continue to weaken and then it's going to move off uh, to central Kentucky. So damaging wind do, uh, is, remains the main threat, but of course there's still that low in risk to see some hail and potentially a spin up tornado. I'm going to keep my eyes on the radar and keep you updated here throughout the evening. Connie. Okay, we'll check in with you in just a minute. Thanks, Colleen. Developing news to tell you about here on the night team. Israel has retaliated against Iran for drone attacks Saturday night according to U.S. officials. A U.S. official confirmed to ABC that Israeli missiles have hit a site in Iran. The official could not confirm whether Syria and Iraq sites were hit as well. The strike comes after earlier reports indicated that Israel had aborted strikes against Iran twice already this week. This is a developing story and we will keep you updated as we know more. Worries have to subside for homeowners living in Hurstbourne Acres tonight after a home invasion and rape in the area just 24 hours ago. Police say it happened yesterday. An elderly woman calling 911 after an attack inside her home. The night teams, Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester revisit the neighborhood today, speaking with residents about the horrific crime. I would call this a very typical suburban neighborhood. In the East Louisville neighborhood of Hurstbourne Acres. I, I love it. It's peaceful. It's always quiet back here. Things are now calm, but homeowners' anxieties are mounting. When that sort of thing happens, it, it definitely gets your attention. I was just shocked. I didn't think anything back here would happen. Around 2.30 Wednesday, police say a man knocked on an elderly woman's door. When she answered, he pushed her to the ground and raped her before stealing items from her home and running off. It, it was just total surprise because that sort of thing never, never happens here. So you tend, I tend to look at this as a kind of an incidental uh, event. Well, LMPD does call this incident troubling. They also say it's very uncommon. They're now asking anyone who may have pictures or videos of the suspect to please send it to police. Police described the suspect as a 5'10 black man with a thin build, wearing a black shirt and either jeans or blue pants at the time of the incident. We hear about virtually no violence, uh, no crime, no break in, nothing of any sort of, oh, certainly no gunplay or anything like that. Because there's always people out walking or riding their bikes or anything, and then the police car that drives by all the time. As neighbors grapple with an unthinkable tragedy taking place just feet from their doorstep. I don't see any kind of threat. I don't see any uh, looming issues here. They're choosing vigilance, not fear. Because none of us have experienced this sort of thing uh, in this neighborhood before that I know of. We're always cautious about everything all the time, so just keep an eye out. A moment for pause as police continue their search for the suspect.
in Louisville, Connor Steff in the WHAS 1119 on your side. And again, as we mentioned, if anyone in the area has videos or pictures relevant to this investigation, you can submit them to LMPD's anonymous tip line or call 574-LMPD. Police have made an arrest in the deadly shooting from last night in the Taylor Berry neighborhood. Raymond Holmes was arrested yesterday, charged with murder and receiving stolen property in connection with the shooting on Taylor Boulevard. Well, according to court documents, Holmes was seen on camera chasing the victim down before shooting him. Police say they searched Holmes' vehicle and found a handgun that was reportedly stolen in May of last year. Holmes appeared in court this morning where his bond was set at $75,000. The ongoing search for transportation solutions at JCPS continues and now we're learning city and district leaders have met to discuss alternatives fulfilling a promise made earlier this week. Metro Council President Marcus Winkler was in the meeting yesterday also at the table both TARC and TARC union leadership as well as Mayor Greenberg and JCPS Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio. Monday Greenberg had pitched the idea of allowing TARC drivers to become JCPS bus drivers. The idea Idea comes as TARC is facing layoffs due to financial hardships. However, the TARC bus union pushed back against the idea, saying drivers have better pay and more consistent work at TARC. These folks are very loyal to TARC. They've got years of service there. They want to work for TARC. And so one of the options we explored yesterday, which seemed to have legs as a possible solution, is rather than people being laid off by TARC and hired by JCPS, can JCPS contract TARC uh, to run these routes? Remember, nothing so far is set in stone. These are just initial talks, and JCPS officials say they expect follow-up meetings, but of course, time is of the essence. New information today on how medical marijuana will be rolled out in Kentucky. Today, Governor Andy Beshear announced the window for license applications to grow and sell cannabis for medical purposes will open on July 1st, six months earlier than expected. In the initial round, a total of 16 licenses will be issued to cultivators of various sizes, as well as 48 licenses for dis dispensaries. Uh, the governor said the limited number of licenses is an effort to reduce the amount of potential financial loss. Now, this is not recreational cannabis. This is medical cannabis. And we have an idea of how many people will qualify for the conditions that exist. And so flooding a market with a product without um, scaling it to the number of people who could qualify for it is pretty much what happened to hemp when they issued just a ton of different licenses and a whole lot of farmers suffered from serious and significant financial harm. Despite ramping up the program, there are still questions on whether medical marijuana will actually be harvested and on the market by January 1st. Focus investigator John Charlton has been following the developments as Kentucky prepares for medical marijuana. You can check out all his stories on whs11.com. New details tonight as a judge did not grant a request that would lift Bob Baffert's ban at Churchill Downs. But the judge did not dismiss the case altogether. Judge Mitch Perry said the case held enough merit to not dismiss the case, but not enough to grant a temporary injunction. Churchill Downs set out this statement saying in part, we are pleased with the court's decision today and believe Mr. Zidane may suffer from a case of derby fever symptoms can contribute to questionable judgment and extreme cases can result in litigious behavior. There is no known cure. Nevertheless, we have communicated clearly about the rules of entry, which are the same for everyone and are non-negotiable. Contenders cannot sue their way into the Kentucky Derby. Well, in response, Zidane Stable said they would appeal that ruling on an emergency basis, saying in part, the goal of our effort remains to ensure our horse Muth will have a once in a lifetime opportunity to compete in the 150th run for the roses May 4th. The thunder over Louisville practice is tomorrow and you can expect to hear and see several aircrafts in the air and today we got to see how pilots prepare for the big show. The night team's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie show us behind the scenes high in the sky. In just two days, one of the nation's largest air shows will be here. 
thunder over Louisville. The airplanes are allowed to do things that they wouldn't normally be allowed to do. More than 30 aircraft will take to the skies for several hours. I got the chance to sit in the pilot seat and take a ride in the Boeing 747-8F simulator. I won't let anything happen to you, trust me. Captain Tony Osborne says there are two pilots and two safety officers in the aircraft. The safety officers are checking for traffic to make sure no one collides. I would be back here checking to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and also I'd be looking around for any stray aircraft that might be in the area. The plane climbs about 45 feet in the air traveling over the Ohio River and the 2nd Street Bridge. Turn right a little bit, there you go, good job. Keep turning right, there you go. At times the plane was in autopilot mode but eventually we landed on the runway. Ten. There you go. Touchdown. Matt Creed, air boss of Thunder Over Louisville, says practice happens every Friday before the show so performers can see what the hazards look like and practice their routine. We want to make sure that if there is anything, for example, like on the bridge down there, um, nobody can be on that bridge when we're doing aerobatics. So if we see somebody come out, we tell the airplanes to stop what they're doing until we, we get the area cleared out and go. Reed stays in the command center to make sure there is a smooth show. He emphasized that nothing can fly in the air without permission. It is just as illegal to fly a drone in in the area as it is to fly an airplane in the area. And the last thing we want is for somebody to run a drone out into the air show box and cause a problem with one of our performers. As he and so many others look forward to this annual kickoff before Derby in Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. Fun assignment there. Well, to stay on top of everything you need to know for Thunder Over Louisville, text the word Thunder to the number you see there on your screen, and we will send our complete Thunder Guide packed with traffic information, do's and don'ts, and other helpful tips right to your phone.